asteroid that is believed to be worth more than our global economy. This is the golden era of, of space exploration. The first trillionaire there will ever be is the person who exploits the natural resources on asteroids. So there's a whole new explosion of new kind of uses of space. Harnessing the resources of space, especially the asteroids. There's enough material in the asteroids to support a population of a trillion people. Our planet is running out of resources. More resources are needed. There's competition from China and Russia, and a space race among billionaires to be the first. NASA is about to intentionally crash a spacecraft into an asteroid. Who really owns space? Who should get access to these minerals? Well, place your bets on NASA. I don't think the United States wants to be second on anything. Is this the start of a space war? And the stakes are sky high. Resources are playing a much more important role today than it did during the Cold War. The resources that are thought to be there on the moon and including asteroids, it's about trillions of dollars. Merrill Lynch predicts the space industry, including extraterrestrial mining industry, to be valued at 2.7 trillion the next three decades. A small asteroid roughly 200 meters in length that is rich in platinum could be worth up to $300 million. Take this white dwarf star called Lucy. Her core is made of crystallized carbon, basically a giant diamond the size of our sun. In 2015, an asteroid named UW158 passed close to Earth. It was estimated to contain more platinum than what has ever been mined on Earth. Or take 16 Psyche asteroid, estimated to be worth $700 quintillion. Exploration of space-based natural resources are on everyone's mind. The end goal here is to be capable of harvesting resources and bringing them back to Earth. Economic ambitions are no doubt a driving factor of China's ever-increasing space ambitions. China has actually articulated goals for space-based solar power, asteroid mining, and I would say that the U.S. is actually starting to look like it's trying to catch up because the U.S. for long has had talked about these capacities but had not actually invested in these capacities by calling them science fiction. But now when you see feasibility studies and microwave beaming being demonstrated at a very low level but demonstrated, suddenly there is an in interest also because China is basically investing seriously in this capacity. So it's a very interesting world of space that we live in today. And China is not missing out. A slew of activities amongst China's private and state-owned aerospace companies this year are a testament to China's growing ambitions for economic domination of space, prompting a competition between great powers for supremacy in space. I don't think the United States wants to be second on anything, and I think that's why you're seeing the, the vigorous support of the Biden administration uh, with our space program. And thank you, my dear friend and our outstanding NASA administrator and the guy, only guy here that's been in space, Bill Nelson. Bill, you're a good friend. So any, any expansion that they're doing is something that bears watching. And China certainly is our number one strategic concerns in terms of a threat to the American people. There's insatiable demand for strategic minerals that are increasingly hard to come by on our own planet. And nobody knows that better than China. Breeze 17 Mineral Essential for modern computing and manufacturing technologies for everything from solar panels to semiconductors. China currently holds a monopoly on the rare earth element extraction and processing to the tune of 90%. China boasts over 36 billion invested in mining projects in Africa alone. Resource-hungry China also has major involvement in global critical mining supply chains which include cobalt, tungsten and lithium. 
aspect of precious metals, especially those required for making items like computers, cell phones and batteries, are already affecting the production lines as well as global supply chains. So now, some are planning to go beyond the planet in search for precious metals. Space mining is being touted as the next multi-trillion dollar business. The next step, space. Some rare earth metals are considered strategically important because they are an integral part of manufacturing of electronic devices, electric vehicle batteries, and military equipment. We have a limited amount of rare earth elements, specifically the platinum group metals. These are industrial metals that are used in everyday things. Your cell phone, cancer drugs, um, catalytic converters, and we're running out of them. The only way to access more of these is to go off world. A single asteroid the size of a football field could contain 25 to 50 billion worth of platinum alone. China also announced a plan that would involve building an asteroid monitoring and defense system and a technical experiment to closely track and attack a threatening asteroid to alter its orbit as early as 2025. China will now protect our skies. For the future of lunar and asteroid exploration, many things need to happen. Part of the strategy is to hit an asteroid off course. For example, this small celestial body has a size of about 30 meters. An immediate launch of an impactor will then collide with an asteroid, which will hopefully divert it between 3 to 5 centimeters away from its course. A deviation would then change the trajectory by 1,000 kilometers after three months. NASA is already working on a planetary defense system to deflect an asteroid which may be on collision course to Earth. NASA is about to intentionally crash a spacecraft into an asteroid. Now, Dimorphos poses no threat to Earth tonight, but the goal for NASA is to see if they can push the asteroid off course. So it's something they could do in the future to prevent Earth from Armageddon. Uh, it is the first time NASA is attempting a test like this. So quite simple. NASA is going to take this multi-million dollar spacecraft and just slam it into an asteroid. Its target is that smaller asteroid, Dimorphos. This spacecraft is traveling at a speed of four miles per second. Um, it's about the size, I understand, Colonel, of Egypt's Great Pyramid. The spacecraft is equivalent to the size of a refrigerator. And you're in the vast vacuum of space here. At the moment, dart hitting the Dimorphos asteroid. Probably the only time that you're going to cheer for a loss of a spacecraft. A, a big moment for this team, uh, a big success. Uh, they can pose various types of threats to uh, the planet. And uh, by doing this test, they've been able to show that they that potentially can alter the tracking, the orbit of these asteroids. And if they can do that, uh, that could potentially save life as we know it. There are also commercial benefits of being able to find and track asteroids as they can be then mined for precious materials potentially worth trillions of dollars. Everyone on this planet becomes a billionaire. NASA will launch Psyche mission to explore asteroids worth more than the global economy. 16 Psyche, a 140 mile, 226 kilometer wide asteroid could contain a core of iron, nickel and gold Asteroid contains metals worth around 10 quintillion. A quintillion is a million billions. NASA Psyche spacecraft was set to launch in August 2022 and arrive at the asteroid in 2026. However, software issues and mission development problems meant the mission missed its window with a new launch target in 2023, reaching the asteroid in 2029. An important thing to, to note is that the Psyche mission that I'm running is, is a pure science mission. In terms of sustainability, it's a gigantic win. In terms of economics, it's not profitable yet. That would be the beautiful goal. That is the utopian future of humankind where we have learned to take care of our Earth and we can do our heavy industry and our mining and mineral extraction in space. On the other hand, in April 2021, a Chinese space mining startup launched into low Earth orbit a robot prototype, NEO-1, that can scoop up debris left behind by other spacecraft with a big net and then burn it with its electric propulsion system. This is the first commercial spacecraft dedicated to mining space resources. One of the accompanying payloads is the Yuan Wang-1, 
or Little Hubble Satellite, which searches the stars for possible asteroid mining targets. The 30-kilogram robot developed by Shenzhen Base Origin Space will pave the way for future technologies capable of mining on asteroids. Falling costs of space launches and spacecraft technology alongside existing infrastructure provide a unique opportunity to explore extraterrestrial resource extraction. And in China, you see a lot of rocket companies that are planning to build 20, 30, 50 rockets per year by like mid-decade. And so at that point, you're going to see just this, probably this dramatic decrease in, in cost of access to space. And that's going to enable a lot of different things to be done in orbit that previously were just prohibitively expensive. I think we're definitely going to start seeing more commercial use of, of space for just general purposes because of this decreased cost of access to space. I think we will be able to mine an asteroid within the next decade. In today's economics, and in the economics of the near future, the next few years, it makes no sense to go after precious metals and asteroids. And the reason is the cost of getting to and from the asteroids is so high that it vastly outstrips the value of anything that you'd harness from the asteroids. The return to Earth ideas, they have to compete against terrestrial markets for those same materials. That would be very challenging. But in the near term is mining materials for use in space. The number one item is water. There are certain types of asteroids that have hydrated minerals. We can process those minerals to release the water. Our best use of the water is actually as processing to, to make it into a rocket propellant. And then with rocket propellant, we can move around space more readily. We don't have to launch all of our propellant from Earth. But space mining is subject to relatively little existing policy or governance, despite these potential high stakes combined with the return of great power competition on Earth and in space creates the potential for conflict among competing nations. Who really owns space? Who should get access to these minerals on the moon, Mars, and beyond? By the Obama administration in 2015, raised eyebrows when it gave property rights to companies for the materials that they mined from asteroids. So we're certain that when we go to an asteroid, capture it in a bag, and mine the resources from it, that we will own those resources. Uh, I'm ready. Uh, NASA is. Uh, NASA's in a new era. This is the golden era of, of space exploration. Like in traditional mining and rare earth refining, China is far ahead of the U.S. in terms of industrial policy and new investments. The United States cannot afford to overlook this industry. The joke is on the U.S. and it will not be a funny one. If you've liked what you've seen in today's video, Please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Reportify Media.